The idea of creating gold has been in the scientist's mind for thousands of years, and it's called the Philosopher's Stone. Basically, you take any element and you try to turn it into gold. A lot of philosophers would try their whole lives to produce gold. The most element they would try with was lead. And after that, it was copper. Ancient alchemists and Muhammad Zakaria Razi was one of the most famous ones, tried to mix different stuff to create gold. A lot of weird mixtures went into it, like bones of a bird, hair of a certain dog, and a liter of cow urine. They would take all these in the lab and try them out. You could kind of say that they tried this with all types of materials that was available to them, and they tried it in their laboratory. But could anybody actually create gold? The short answer is no. Thousands of scientists, experts, and philosophers tried this, and a lot of them died because of cancer. Because in these laboratories, they breathed in all this toxic gas, and it caused them to get cancer. But Muhammad Zakaria Razi wasn't one of those that died because of cancer. He lived to 70 years old. But because of these experiments, in his later years, he was blind. But this was back in the day. New scientists have new ideas. They say we can turn lead into gold because lead is pretty close to gold. Because lead has 82 protons and gold has 79. So they're very close. Scientists say if we can do something to subtract three protons from lead, we could get gold. It's that easy. But it's not easy at all. You guys know what protons are. They're inside the nucleus. And with none of those experience like back in the day with like dog hair, camel urine, pro's bone, or anything, you're not gonna remove any protons. It can be separated, but it can go away and the atom will change. In the year 1903, in the laboratory of Ernest Rutenford, they noticed that thorium atoms were changing into radium. And it's good to know that thorium has 90 protons and radium has 88. They later noticed that the reason this happened is because thorium is a radioactive material and it doesn't have a stable nucleus. In the year 1903, Hantaro Nagaoka was a Japanese scientist that was studying different types of atoms. He noticed that mercury was even closer to gold than lead because mercury has 80 protons and gold has only 79, so they're one apart. Nagaoka decided to get rid of that one proton with electricity. He connected 15,000 volts of electricity to mercury and that allowed it to have a speck of gold in the mercury. But it wasn't worth it because it wasn't enough gold to actually collect. In the 1940s, the Germans were able to get rid of one of the protons in mercury and make it 79. But they hit one huge problem, and that was the amount of neutrons in the atom. Mercury has 120 neutrons, and gold has 118 neutrons. And that is why the protons couldn't stay stable, and they would turn back to the mercury amount. All these things they were doing weren't free, and they were costing a lot of money. And the tools and equipment they were using was extremely expensive. What we're trying to say is that they spent all this money, they didn't even get an ounce of gold. These experiments we're talking about are all in atom form because they're talking about protons and neutrons. Even if they were successful, they would get atoms of gold, not kilograms or grams. Hundreds of thousands of dollars spent, one gold atom 
that you could only see with a microscope. Gold is expensive, but not this expensive. Looking at the rules of physics after this is very amazing. We can change a lot of things, but we really can't change the atoms ourselves. It is true that they took a lot of time and money to do these experiments, but they were very helpful. The same lab that Muhammad Zakaria Razi worked at, he discovered alcohol and a lot of useful stuff that we use to this day. Modern experiments were the same. To get gold, we learned a lot of things about different types of atoms. But humans don't let go. A couple years ago, an article came out that Chinese scientists melted copper with argon gas and they got a gold lookalike substance. In the lab, they melted a piece of copper with argon gas and the gas had electricity. Professor Sun Jian with his associates did this experiment and they said what we did gave us a substance that was gold-like. They said with this experiment, we could turn copper into something more valuable. As you know, a lot of smart devices use gold in them. A lot of smartphones have gold in them and we really need this metal to keep on advancing. This professor and his associates are trying to create a metal that could replace the gold we use in them. If their gold could replace the real gold inside these devices, it would be very helpful because it could cut the cost drastically. The article about this is in the Science Advances magazine if you would like to check it out.